Hi, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, it's very exciting to be reading of, uh, such uh, amazing poets. And, um, so I'm, I'm going to read uh, a few poems from Letters Home and then a few um, more recent ones. Um, so the first poem is like uh, actually it's inspired by my friend. I'm glad she's not here, so I can't say anything about her. Like she. Um, it's fascinating some Chinese people really didn't, doesn't, don't want to go to Chinatown because they resist that idea of the stereotype and um, that need for, for, for going to Chinatown. So um, in a way, uh, it's about that, but it's much more. Trace, whatever you say, don't ask me where I come from. I've been here 15 years. I went to school in Cheltenham. I'm a voter but didn't vote to leave. I'm good at saying how lovely, even when things go wrong. I live in a good postcode and have a garden of my own. Whatever you say, don't ask me where I come from. I have traded my country up for better air. There's nothing I miss, not the sea of black heads in a metro station, certainly not my aging relatives. Sometimes I think of Cha Xiu and chicken rice done the proper way, half lean, half fat, served with a dash of julienne ginger and garlic. I only drink lukewarm water, and I follow news on protests over there, night after night. Um, the other next poem has to do with rice cooker. <laughs> and um, so, it, literally, it was inspired by my friend who brought a rice cooker in a uh, suitcase. Arrival, October 1998. When I first arrived, I did not tell anyone that I had a rice cooker in my suitcase. You will miss rice over there, my mother said. At customs, the officer glanced at the letter embossed with the five yellow birds. Why would they offer you a place here? He shook his head and stamped limited leave to remain. Helen's court was where they put all the foreign students together so that they would feel more at home. A bed sit waiting for his tenant. Empty bookshelves, a quaint looking desk, a worn out armchair and a lamp with a green shade. I opened the sash window and heard a faint trail of bicycle bells. Home, I said, but it hurt. The post room. Among the narrow wooden shelves, I was the only one there. My parents would be pleased. Mum said she went to Yinke to stock up on tea leaves to make for where she knew the best fishmonger. Her letters were full of questions. How cold is England's cold? Should we send more instant noodles? Each week I went to Sainsbury's to improve my English. Walking up and down the busy aisles, I relish the sound of each exotic word, courgettes, crumpets, red Leicester cheese, <laughs> harsh relish. Saying it right is an art. Here they actually have Chinese cabbage. At night I'll leave the butter and milk outside the window to keep it chilled. On winter days, when the sun went missing, and I felt like an incomplete being, I visit Adamame, hidden on Holywell Street, just like the other ramen place in Yamate with its wooden screen doors. There, people would queue for ages for a bowl of miso happiness. Sometimes, in the middle of my lunch, it felt as if me and my brother were having noodles together, as he asked to, me to repeat after him the names of his favorite players, Rooney, Fellini, Raphael, De Gea. Um, this poem, um, it's maybe in a way response to, to that quote about multilingual. Uh, sai tin, it means waste of money. My father, who taught me how to fold Soviet penguins. I was eight or nine when I saw you practice folding Soviet penguins. For a long time, Christmas was a matter of watching fireworks on television, mother trying not to let her feelings show. And those evenings, you came home, too tired to speak, your voice already spent with the customers. Thirteen hours of pacing around dining rooms, 
impeccable cutlery, well-ironed table linen, other families, happiness under the chandeliers. That's what work has been for you since you turned 18. And for all the fathers in the golden 80s, a husband must provide as long as he is alive. I try to think about who you really were, a boy before the duty, your father who never offered your mother a kiss, a kind word. But he kept a white shiny statue of Mao long out after the couch was over. You never finished high school because your father said he couldn't tolerate the idea of excessive schooling, a sign of moral corruption or sighting. The day I was accepted for the school on One Jordan Road, where the school drive glittered with Mercedes, we knew we were moving beyond our league. And yet, it suddenly seemed as if something was brightening again in you, something that has nothing to do with table napkins. So, um, continuing in that vein, I've always find it very fascinating how um, my, my school friends used to be really engaged with TV shows, and uh, every day it was the same, like, you know, kept trying to re tell each other what, what happened in the previous night. So, um, it doesn't matter, we, we might be watching different shows, <laughs> you, uh, you and me. Girls from my class. The best girls in my class never wore a blazer, just royal blooming that lined with camel silk. Carol filled her journal with UFOs and disappearances. At home, Denise was banned from watching Tong Zhang Wan Xiu. If you don't blow dry your hair, you'll be cursed with lifelong headaches. My first year of high school, I failed English because I wasn't sure what an essay means. Mother never praised me except for my ability to spit out the thinnest fish bones. For a long time, I wanted to be a nun because they looked so tranquil, so perfect. My classmates knew how I loved my Chinese teacher. My exercise book filled with her smiles, her dresses. I never traveled anywhere before 18. When I first arrived in England, I couldn't believe how big the country was. Me, who never had a proper country to start with. And the first man I thought the world of pushed me down and said, I'll love to do it with you on the floor. If you keep digging, sooner or later you might reach a volcano. And that day you decided to be a poet. What on earth were you thinking? Um, a bit of Chinese lesson here. <laughs> Just um, really like the units, the classifiers, what we call, which is absent in English. Chinese classifiers. How do I explain the rules for units? They are spontaneous. Churn for furniture and flat surfaces like A4 paper, while Z is for animals and watches. Lup for small grains, rice, sand, pearls, or stars. Teal for anything slender from a noodle to a river. You ask why is it yatin legislation and why yatze egg? Why yato movie when to means a rabbit? How come gan is a unit for a room but it is also good for a school? Why is Beijing more polluted than London and Hong Kong different from the mainland? How much freedom have you got there? I tell you I don't know. Someone handed us the rules. Um, I'll read a few new ones. So, um, I've always found it very strange, and especially during the pandemic, how lots of time was spent on playgrounds with parents, and <laughs> parents uh, who were very bored and trapped. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a kind of intimacy between people during the pandemic, um, for locals, between us. Between blades of grass, we asked each other about our childhoods. And I told you my love for the anime, I love Queen Maron. How beautiful she is when she transforms herself into a purple hair singer with her magic pouch. 
The other day you texted me saying, just checking in to see how you are. Sent me photos of Lucas playing obstacle race in the garden. I needed a holiday, a real one, one away from the family. Pigeons pecking on the grass, two bigger boys comparing their Pokemon cards in the playground. In our local park, you talked about the days you studied at Guild Hall when you dreamt of becoming an actress. All the odd jobs you did back to get by. Every part you got audition for, from a village baker in the local pantomime to Anna in the King and I. I just loved it, every moment on the stage. Once, you taught me how to map out the further stars with Star Walk, your phone a planetarium glowing in the dark in your hand. Um, this poem um, I wrote, um, and thanks, thanks to Poetry London for um, giving it a home, but um, I am glad that my mum and I were on speaking, uh, on speaking terms now, but back then this has generated a poem. The truth is, when you stop speaking to me for a whole year, it's like the world has gone quiet, become atheist, the snow falling, falling, ever so quietly, over our small tots, in the kitchen when you cut up the ginger, scaled a fish, the careful way you peeled the grapes for me when I was tiny. Every week I bring Charlotte to dance lessons, often arriving late because we'll go by bus. I keep dreaming of what lessons would be like had you decided to bring me, secretly, in our family albums. Why were there no pictures of me blowing a candle on a cake? The snow just kept falling. And I feel sorry for you, who grew up without a father to spoil or scold you, to give you piggy rides. And your mother who couldn't read, because that's how women were supposed to be. And then the snow that fell like icing on an English phone box reminded me of all the years you never called because you're Chinese. The Chinese parents never condescend, never call their children. Or maybe you felt I was in this new planet without you in these sandstone streets, forgetting all those weekends when we used to go, just you and me, to Grenfell Road, trying out perfumes, choosing eyeshadows in the famous Longsheng Pharmacy always jam-packed with tourists and preening girls. And after our shopping, you would buy me one of those prettiest Indonesian cakes from the tiny cafe nearby. Their soft rainbow colors and coconut memories. But the snow kept falling, falling in this weather of silence between us, draining all faith, all love, but a phone call away from forgiveness. And this, I've always been quite fascinated with um, the way people say things to each other and not say some things to each other, how we kind of um, hide ourselves in language sometimes. Say, she will leave me with the most elaborate instructions to bake a cake as if. She doesn't know I wonder each time when she said sorry, sorry. The other day, when we stood in a fully packed train carriage, talking about the lateness of the world, that morning we spent in Bloomsbury, skinny lattes and fresh croissants. She doesn't know that time she texted saying she's running late for the film, but when I see her, her hair matted with rain. We don't know that. On the coldest of days, we'd sit next to the fireplace and that silence runs on like the rain outside the window. She never replied to some of my emails. I wasn't sure if... Um, I'll just read a couple, one, one last poem. Um, so, this is quite recent and um, I, I've uh, been thinking about like the uh, like Hong Kong having left it for so long and uh, what it means to me and um, place, like moments that I've lived there and moments that I was there but wasn't quite completely there. So this is uh, 
these are the moments when I was uh, observing the 1997 um, Hanover, um, and um, and then very soon, two years later, I, I joined the, after when I came back to Hong Kong. When when I go back to Hong Kong, I actually uh, joined the government. So it was quite a strange way of experiencing time. I remember how much I loved sitting at home with mum on the sofa, watching night after night Keigo and his love for his music fan Masaki in God, Please Give Me More Time. It's a heart-wrenching movie to see the lovers standing there in the torrential rain, helpless in the love for each other. We call this old cat, watching Japanese soap opera endlessly. This obsession is not just ours. Around seven or eight each evening, the families in Hong Kong were mostly in their homes, enjoying bow cat. So it's 28 degrees outside, even though it's no longer summer. I can't believe it. It's just one year after the British left. There's a lot of rain on the day they left. Lots of tears shed in the ceremony of two flags, one raised, one lowered. You know what? You can no longer post a letter with a stamp showing the Queen's face. There are other things besides. Ironically, the year I watched God Please Give Me More Time, I got a letter embossed with gold telling me that I won an air ticket, that I can spend three years doing nothing but read Dickens, Hardy and Elliot. I reread it over and over again next to the water fountain outside Prince's building in case there's some mistake. I had wanted to leave home for so long, so much. I felt weak in my knees, and that afternoon there were fireworks in my heart. Two, that year my mother's childhood home on that distant mountain became a story. He trace on the map the name of a new town to King Lane. What happened to my grandmother and auntie happened to the rest of them. Those who thought they would never leave, but they did. Those who boarded the ship decades ago, some who took the risk and stay on board, dreaming of the Golden Mountain, some settled down to this city, some in Taiwan. What happened to my grandmother's little house with a sink roof, a village dwelling built brick by brick, and their dog Xiaogo, facing the greenest slope etched with the five Chinese characters that I won't ever tell you? Free. To have lived through 1997 as one of the millions who watched it on TV in the city where it all happened. That song they call Sunset was played for the last time as the ships left our harbour. They said today is a day of celebration, not of sorrow. But for who? We had steamed fish and stir fried choison for dinner. After dinner, I would be at the table studying for my A levels while the family watched the latest TVB episode. I have always found history difficult. Why do we have to study both Chinese and Western history? What is the difference between them? We had to retrace all the way from the last Emperor Puyi to the boxers. And how did the other parts of the Western world, Napoleon who always hid his hand in his coat, and all the countries I never thought I could set foot on, except Hawaii, where do they all fit? That year, too many families left and the sky was restless. Thank you.